we got a little bit squirrely Dan coming around the corner right there. Hello, people of the interwebs. It's your favorite garage dwelling Sarah here with another vehicle review. And today I have the 2021 Genesis GV80. Aside from the front grille that slightly looks like a Cadillac, I can't really say this resembles any other vehicle on the market. And that's what I like about it. It's distinctly a GV80, especially these side markers, how they blend into the daytime running light. That's pretty. This GV80 is the all-wheel drive advanced plus model and it comes with these 20 inch five spoke wheels wrapped in 265 50 R20 Michelin Premacy tires. Tucked away behind these 20 inch wheels are these massive four pot calipers that say Genesis printed on them. These are pretty tail lights, I like them. Open, Let's see what you got. Oh, what is this? Oh, it folds, weird. As you notice, it does have a third row seat which is primarily the only thing different with the Advanced Plus package, which adds $6,000 to the price of this vehicle. But check this out. You press these buttons, seats just fold away. Look at them go. Now there's all kinds of room. Ouch, watch your head getting into this thing. Oh, that's what this is for. Now, you have this right here, this carpet, that folds down over everything, and it's protected. And the back side of it, if you wanna switch that over, is a rubber mat. So if you wanna put something that's nasty in there, you just flip this whole thing over. Another slight downfall of this thing having a nice looking roof line is it's really low in the back of the vehicle. So if I tried to sit on the edge back here, it's, you can't. For 6,000 bucks, these things better fold up. Okay, good, they do. This interior is called Ultramarine in Dune. It has blue fabric and blue carpet all throughout. Ooh, this is a nice back seat. Hey, there's buttons on the side of the seat. Oh, neat. Well, that's fun. I guess you can screw with the person in the passenger seat. If they fall asleep, you can just hold that button and then shove them up into the dashboard. And then when they wake up, they're gonna be like, how the hell did I get up here? Does it recline? Oh yeah, it does recline. Wow, this thing reclines a lot, jeez. Not only are these seats gorgeous, but they're super comfy. They're heated and ventilated. Full steering wise, not a ton of bolstering. My back sweat is actually sticking me to the leather and it's causing me not to move around too much. So there's a plus there. Check out this cup holder. It just kind of extends softly. What I do like about these seats though, is while you're driving down the road, if you're the type of person that leans one way really hard against a bolster, it'll actually move and make micro adjustments in the seat so that way you don't get sore while you're driving down the road. The first time I did it, I was like this car has poltergeists because I swear my seat moved and I didn't touch a button. This is a really pretty climate control back here for the people in the back seat. This thing's got two holes in the roof too. There's one here and one there. You want to see something confusing? Check this out. Where do they go? They just disappear into the center. Oh wow. I guess that's if you got some skis. You can put them through here. Both of them. This is a really nice back seat though. I don't I don't know if I would bother buying the third row on this. It's a nice third row, but I unless you have like really bougie children, why would you why? Just make them take the bus. Can't say I've ever seen a steering wheel that looks like this before. It's a big oval surrounded by a giant circle. And it doesn't have too many buttons on here and the buttons that are on here make a lot of sense and they're easy to figure out and use while you're driving down the road. Like the fact that this thing has the ability to pretty much drive itself. You just gotta keep some pressure on the steering wheel, but it'll go around corners, come to a complete stop and take back off again, all with the radar cruise control. You just gotta let the thing know that you're still in charge and that you can die, but the car can't. The car just gets melted down into more metal and then reborn as another car again. That doesn't hold true for humans. Or does it? It depends if you follow the movie Avatar, the theory of that movie. Then it means we could come back as like an acorn or a mealworm. Whoa! 
What is it doing? No, don't fold me. All right, let's fire this thing up and go over the tech. When you rev it, the numbers get bigger as the tachometer sweeps past them. That is so cute. First thing you notice when you start this thing up on this massive 14 and a half inch tablet display is a beautiful sunny sky. Also on the far right, it does have your navigation kind of like floating in a cloud, just subtle, shows the shape of the roads. The controls for this infotainment system are fairly self-explanatory other than the fact that the back button I found myself kept pressing it to put this thing in reverse because I am dumb. I just, I was like, back, I wanna go back. And I kept sticking my fat finger on that thing, thinking it would pop into reverse. And then I saw my menu change and I was like, hmm, wonder why I'm not going backwards. The gauges on here are fairly self-explanatory and simple. There's a little screen in the center that you go through and you can check various little menus inside here. You get your own little screen down here for the digital climate control and the center of the knobs also illuminate with the temperature that you have it set on. See, if I go in here into the menu, sounds of nature, there it is. That's what's up, bird noises. I love that Hyundai and Genesis has this feature. It just never gets tiring to me. The 21 speaker lexicon sound system is impressive on its own, but this thing takes it even one step further, which I didn't even know this was possible in a vehicle, but it has active road noise canceling. It literally does what a set of noise canceling headphones do. It pumps inverted sound waves through the speakers as it's detecting outside the vehicle to cancel out that noise and make it quieter going down the road. Mind blowing. The vast majority of the people that purchase one of these vehicles will not take it off-road. So I'm gonna take it off-roading in this video and see what this thing can do. This is equipped with what is called road scanning adaptive suspension. So what it does is it utilizes the cameras in the front to scan the road for potholes and then it makes micro adjustments in the suspension to make it smooth. So let's test it out in this area that looks like a pothole worst nightmare. I have it in the drive mode setting of comfort right now, which should make it extra comfortable over these bumps. What is that in the road? Oh, geez. It's a, it's a downed helicopter. I also have the active road noise canceling system turned on. So the only thing I can hear right now is my water bottle slishing around on the passenger side floor. I mean, an occasional little grunt from the engine. That's it. I have to say how quiet this is on the interior could start to create a false sense of this thing's off-road capabilities because you don't hear the suspension banging around. So you're like, oh, it's nothing. And then next thing you know, you rip your entire bumper off. So here's a steep hill. It's a little steep hill. I wanna see if this thing can climb it. Although I don't know what's on the other side. Well, it looks like it comes down right there. Yeah, this is fairly steep. Press this guy right here for your electronic locking differential. The diff is locked. Can you do it? The only thing this is gonna struggle at is the approach and departure angles because it doesn't have a ton of ground clearance. Ooh, this is super steep. I feel like I made the transmission a tad bit angry with that one. I mean, it didn't really spin the tires too, too much. And considering what this thing has on it for tires, it's not too bad. This also has a hill descent control right here. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna use it just because I got it. Not too bad. Let's take this at an angle so I can be gentle on it. There we go. Ding, further done. Woo, it's torquey off-road. Let's do this with traction control turned off. You got a little bit squirrely Dan coming around the corner right there.
yeah, this uh, this hill is pretty much double what I just went up the first time. I got confidence in this little Genesis. Let's see what it'll do. Ooh, this one's okay. I take that back. This is way rougher. Oh. Okay, Genesis. I got this thing wooded to the floor and it does not like it right now. Okay. Maybe next time I'll do this with the traction control off. Well, big hill complete. Pop. That's a satisfying hood pop. Play music at me, I see. Hello, welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. Under the hood of this GV80 is the G6DS Smart Stream 3.5 liter all aluminum V6 that produces 375 horsepower at 5,800 RPM and 391 pound feet of torque from 1,300 RPM to 4,500 RPM. 1,300, I think that is the lowest I've ever seen a peak torque on any car I've ever reviewed before. This engine utilizes direct and port fuel injection as well as it has twin air to water charge coolers that are mounted right up on top of the plenum. I thought it was also worth mentioning if you look at the top of the front strut mount right here, it's cambered way in from the edge of the vehicle. It sits at an angle which aids in this thing's handling. In the name of science, I'm now going to give this thing the beans. As far as drive modes go, there's a dial in the center that you can use to control the modes ranging from eco to snow, comfort, sport, and you can hear it's actually tightening my bolster on the seat to custom. Put it into sport and then I will disable my traction control. I don't know if that'll actually make a difference. Ready? Go. Okay. Sounds spaceshipy. Well, that's good. Wow. The thing's super smooth. It doesn't feel that fast, but the numbers still climb rather quickly. Hmm. Hello, I'm back. Let's talk about the drivetrain since I got this thing up on the lift. Now, depending on what engine you configure the GV80 with, if you get the 2.5 liter turbo four cylinder, you can get this thing with rear wheel drive or all wheel drive if you prefer. However, if you get the three and a half liter twin turbo V6, you can only get it with all wheel drive. Now that is paired to a eight speed automatic transmission that does have an electronic clocking rear differential. Like how I just time traveled over here. This one is a little bit crusty though, because this vehicle came from New England where they use road salt. I don't miss that. You can see right here, the exhaust is true dual from the turbos all the way back until it gets to the single rear muffler, which of course does include fake plastic tips. It's time for the braking test. Nobody behind me? Oh geez. Oh geez, oh it tightened the seatbelt. Oof. That was scary. It really ripped on that seatbelt. This thing has so much tech built into it. I just, I keep finding new things that this does every single time I drive it. The downsides are though, the fuel economy on it, not really the greatest, but it is a twin turbo V6 and it's all wheel drive and it does kind of rip a little bit. So I think it's a, a squeak of a pass in that department. I don't, I don't know. I'm super impressed. They're pushing the envelope with technology in this thing. There's a possibility that air crew is looking at us like we're idiots out here. Hi. Hello. This just went from training sortie to let's look at those weirdos in the desert. So if you guys have never seen my vehicle reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them. Starting with the bean score. As a rating of one to five beans, basing feel you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And this Genesis GV80 is getting a rating of 1.5 beans. It doesn't feel as quick as it is on paper. It's just smooth. And I guess that's what you want in something like this. Next is the meatball score. It is a rating of one to five meatballs based on the vehicle's ability to tackle obstacles off-road that smell like hamburger. And this GV80 is getting a rating of 
1.5 beat balls. I don't think this was ever intended to do serious off-roading, but at least you know you can do some off-roading with it. That's a plus. I think this thing would shine in the snow though. Next is the cookie score. It is a rating of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you spend. It's assessment of value. And the GV80 is getting a rating of four cookies. You get a shitload of tech packed into this thing. I just feel that the rear seat package is not worth the money. Other than that, it's, it's great value. Lastly is the penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And the GV80 is getting a rating of 2.9 penguins. I do like it. I like it because of the looks and the fact that it has odd tech features that I didn't know could exist. And I don't know. It's just a good all around luxury SUV. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another. Bye.